Okay, today I wanted to show you originally only a Teams meeting app uh, using the stage view. The sample then got a bit more uh, complex and a more a bit more approaching real-time collaboration. So uh, nevertheless, it's still a Teams meeting app using the stage view, but also using some real-time collaboration capabilities uh, based on Fluid Framework and so on. So practical scenario is let's vote for some movies. Uh, we can uh, yeah, we can uh, check and then watch the most favorite one together in stage view. Short intro about me, who doesn't know me. Um, my name is Markus Möller. I'm Microsoft 365 developer expert working for Avanart in Germany. I'm based in Munich, so close to the Oktoberfest, but not really uh, live there, um, as said in the chat. Uh, so I'm a Microsoft MVP for M365 development. And uh, if you need uh, to get in contact with me, you can follow me on Twitter or uh, yeah, check my blog where I also wrote about this sample, but I will share the resources at the end as usual during my demos. So maybe let's directly jump in to the demo because I like to start with the demo and later explain how I did it. What we need is, of course, uh, before we establish a Teams meeting app, we need a Teams meeting. What we always need as well, uh, otherwise we could not really join the meeting and also not install a meeting app, is we always need at least one participant. I have my demo buddy here, which I always invite for those cases. And once we have that, we can also edit the meeting. We can edit the meeting and add an app. We need to search for the right now, which is the fluid one. Yeah, that's that one. This app uh, we need to configure first because we need three URLs for our movies, which we want to vote on. And uh, what we can also do, not at this point of time, or at this point of time, it does not make sense, but Maybe uh, it comes to the place uh, that you might change uh, such a movie or exchange one and might reset existing votings. We can also do that, but I will explain this later. This is what this uh, toggle button is. Once we save this, the app will already run and will render our picked videos. But this is only for demo purposes because this, uh, in a production scenario, this app would more intend to uh, work live during a meeting, and therefore we do not use this so-called pre-meeting experience really, but we can also join the meeting. Do not really need a microphone here. And once we are here, we see our app, yeah? This is our custom app, we can click it and then we have the app in the so-called in-meeting experience. This is the same like when you see your chat or when you see uh, the people attending the meeting on the right side. And what I can do now here is I will scroll a bit down. Of course, we can check the videos first, just that you get an impression what I have here. This was for some from my former hobby in the wildlife. Let's vote for, the, for one. And what happens now immediately is we see at the very bottom here is uh, we have one vote, and I also cannot vote anymore because I'm recognizing, hey, this person already voted. Yeah. Um, to show this once again, we can use another user, and this was our buddy uh, Klaus Clausen. He's now the, the same invitation. Uh, I don't care for uh, a response now. I will directly join the meeting. And now I see a totally different team spa. The team spa here below is totally different. Uh, when you see the leaf button here, it's still a hang up and it's a leaf. And here we also do not see any custom app. Yeah, and this is a problem because this capabilities around Teams meeting apps are still in preview. And they only support 
if you are and if you have enabled, uh, for instance, the developer preview on the user. And this is what I cannot do with this regular user because this is not an admin user. Um, but just to increase the votings for demo purposes, the cool thing is that I have this uh, app, as you have seen already enabled also in the pre-meeting experience. Yeah, and uh, productive scenario, once again, you would not do this, but here let's simply vote for the video number one as well. And once we go back, we directly have the second vote here. Well, this is directly synchronized. I will explain you later how this works. And the final thing now, assuming we have several participants and uh, they all voted uh, and then there's a result, an organizer could also share in stage view. But when we click on this share button here, nothing happens. Once again, problematic, we are in preview and this scenario is not yet supported in the web client. And therefore, to show you how this works, I had to prepare another physical Teams client. And therefore, I had to steal the laptop of my wife because my personal productive Teams client is already blocked because this is what I'm using uh, productive and where, where I'm speaking to you. And therefore, I come on. Uh, therefore, I used this uh, second laptop and I uh, approached this with a uh, remote desktop. And once I joined the meeting here, come on, I have the app once again. I cannot vote, yeah, because I still recognizing I already voted. And here, I can also share. And he, of course, recognizes the first video was chosen because it has two votes, the other has none. And this is how we can uh, watch the video together. What you also see in the video here, I have no controls on the video, like play, pause, or something like that. Yeah? And this is on purpose for the moment because the apps, although they are shared, they have individual runtimes per user. So one user could run the whole video, and the other one could press pause in the meantime yeah? and this would not affect the other users and i want to have the uh, the video run in sync for all the users this is why i removed the controls but there's another option but i will come to that later but this was my demo for the moment and now let's get back to the slides and explain you how i did we have some prerequisites. I already explained that during the demo. Yeah, we need a meeting, at least one participants. We need a physical Teams desktop client for the full functionality. And with physical, I mean, really, you need it on a machine. Yeah, no virtual desktop or something like that. Um, you need a physical one still. Yeah? It got a bit better from my last demo. I think it was one year ago uh, when I was demoing the only the in-meeting experience. Some of you might remember when I was recording names and uh, playing them back with audio. Um, this is already possible, uh, the in-meeting experience, at least for a developer preview, as you have seen, um, but not the stage view. And uh, yeah, the client developer preview and it needs to be enabled. The small uh, icon here shows you how you can see it. It's a small P above your account photo. Then you need, of course, a Teams tab application with a specific manifest. We will see the details on the next slide. And last not least, one of the biggest challenges here in this special app was the app needs to be in sync, especially on the votings and also maybe on the video running. Yeah? And the synchronization of the voting, of course, needs to be implemented. And but at the moment, this is really, really easy with Fluid Framework. But first, let me explain you some specifics of the Teams manifest. We need a scope, that's this group chat, because every meeting has a group chat, and uh, this is what's also uh, yeah, in combination with. And for the context, we need at least the meeting side panel and the meeting stage. 
I also used the chat and details tab, and this was a so-called pre-meeting experience. Yeah, that is what I used for the workaround that my uh, normal body user could also uh, vote with his web client. Um, this is, uh, but this is only the exception here. The next thing is the app always runs with more or less the same endpoint. Maybe in stage view or in the in-meeting or pre-meeting experience. And how to distinct that? This can be done from the page context. There you have a so-called frame context. And if this is meeting stage, we know, hey, we are already in stage view. And this is what I'm doing here. I'm checking if we are already in stage view or not. And if so, I will render either the vote movie fluid result component, yeah, which was the last one you've seen. This is the one with only one single winner video or the other component which you have seen on the side panel or in the pre uh, meeting one is the uh, vote movie fluid voting component. This was showing all three videos and also maybe a button and so on and so forth. The next thing is about sync the votings. How you would have done that in the past would be maybe with a backend service, uh, a database list or cache, whatever. Yeah. And then set a timeout and poll uh, every five seconds or one second or so. Hey, did someone else vote? Do I have to increase my values or not? Yeah. But this is old school. A bit provocating, but the new uh, Microsoft Fluid Framework, and especially uh, in, in combination with the recently went GA, I think in the beginning of August, Azure Fluid Relay Service is much more easy to implement. What you can see here, you simply have to set up an Azure resource called Fluid Relay Service, give it a name, put it to a subscription and so on, yeah, like you typically do with Azure components, and that's it. And then on this component, with your code, you can store containers. And all these containers might be meeting specific and store the data per meeting. How does this look like in code? In code, we have to create a container. That's quite simple. We need an Azure client and uh, establish a connection and then create a container with a schema. The schema shows which data put in. And the data you can see here in the middle. What we are doing here is the most popular you have so called shared objects. And the most popular one is a shared map. Shared map you can think about as a .NET developer as a bit like a dictionary. Yeah? And you can see this also uh, when I initialize my values in the next lines here. Yeah, So I'm initializing three votes to zero. And I also initialize a string with all my voted users to none, to blank. Uh, this is and this is my 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 data object in which I reuse all over the scenario. And this is what I'm doing at the moment when I configure my application first time, or when I decide to reconfigure it and reset the votings. Then I will do it the same again. To sync the votings, you only have to do it in the front end. You do not really need to care for the back end. Let's concentrate first on the two uh, portions of code on the left side. Because in our very parent component, we once establish access to our container and with it to our shared map object. And this shared map object, we can simply hand over to any child component in our, our more or less complex React structure and have it there. This is what we need to do first. And second is how the voting and the sync with the other client works. At first, a user in any client presses the button vote. And then we will increase the value in the map by one. So the second thing is we already have an event receiver established on our voting map. And once in any client, yeah, assume we have 100 participants in any client, a value change. Yeah, we will fire that event receiver. And in that case, what we will do is we will get all our values and put it to our state. And the state components then will render the new values. And this is what you have seen in the demo. Once one user or the second user voted, 
I was immediately switching back and the first user had already the values. And that's it. You do not have to care for the backend. Fluid Framework totally handles this for you. But it could even go more easy. And therefore, let me only give a short outlook. My current demo does not reflect this yet. But uh, in the meantime, what's also coming out was the Teams Live Share SDK. And this is even more easy. There, optionally, you do not really need to care for the Azure Fluid Relay service. You automatically get one with your Teams meeting. Yeah, the disadvantage is the data storage is only 24 hours. So if you have enterprise needs like, hey, we need to archive all our meeting voting results for the last uh, decade or so, then you would have to handle it yourself. But otherwise, if it's only running during your meeting, this could be even easier. And the second capability of the Teams Live Share SDK is also you can put some media like audio or video in a synchronized container. And then if someone plays pause, it will be paused for everyone and vice versa. Yeah, or you can also en enable if this works or not. Um, but this is what you can also do. And this is what I will try out next time. But I only want to give you the outlook here that this is also already on the horizon. Last but not least, as always, my resources for this demo. I have, uh, uh, yeah, it's not really uh, two blog posts, but it was a series starting with the first blog post about the stage you won. And then at a later point of time, I was establishing this together with Fluid Framework. So I'll take these two links for the moment, but um, there are other explanations also linked there. And then also for comparison reasons, I have two samples in the PMP team step samples repository. The first one is the old school one with uh, syncing the data in NPM cache. And the second one is the modern one with Fluid Framework. And last but not least, Microsoft documentation on the recently published Teams Live Share SDK. That's from my side. Excellent. Thank you, Marcus. Really, really cool stuff and 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 really cool to walk through the, the capabilities and, and how it was implemented. That fluid framework is is it is actually really hard to understand and, and hard to grasp how the systems are working. So it's it's really great to have that. Now, Marcus, if you don't mind, uh, please copy the links which you had on the slides uh, to the chat so that people can access those uh, already at this point. But yeah, other than that, so. really, really cool stuff. Thank you, Marcus, on that.